Hello, we are starting chapter 6, The Face of the Enemy. In this chapter, our heroes find out who their real enemy is. Here's a little cutscene. It's Kent! That's right, Kent gets to join the party, because I like him. And uh, as we can see here, this is Bernard on the left, who was the boss in, uh, I think, chapter 16 of Ellawood Mode, when you, when you free Kaylin from Laos. But anyway, we can see that Bernard is the leader of this branch of Hawk Company, Kent's not a mercenary. Kent is a Kaelin knight who was assigned to help them by Lord Lundgren. And even Bernard can't believe that Lord Lundgren sent, like, the knightliest knight that ever knighted to do this job. You can also see that Kent appears to have vanished into a wall there. Uh, yeah, cutscenes. Anyway, here's our heroes. And Elwood's a little concerned because he's like, dang, that's a lot of dudes. And he knows shit all about tactics. But luckily, Lynn gives a little hint here for people who have never played Fire Emblem that you should keep track of how far the enemy can move. I feel like if you don't know that, you don't know Fire Emblem. But, uh, okay, everyone's in the formation I prefer. We're going to get started. Yeah, this is a little bug where it starts black and you have to go to, like, a the menu and then it'll come out. I don't know why it does that. Oh, shit, Lynn got a hit. Uh, well, we'll have to hope she doesn't die. Because I can't get the healer to her fast enough. But yeah, that's a sort of an odd bug that I don't know what causes it. But it's it's not game breaking, so at this point I was just like, I will fix it if I figure out what causes it. But in the meanwhile, releasing the beta. There's instructions for how to uh, fix that in the readme anyway. Now we just have to hope the archer doesn't have enough strength to kill Lin. This is the problem with Lin having low HP. Phew. Sometimes if she gets hit early on, you can get yourself in a situation where it's a little lock-based. There's nothing you can do. But, you know, we soldier on. Soldiering on. Okay. Uh, actually, why don't I just quickly de demonstrate our levels here. We've got Priscilla is at the top. Most people are 6 and 5. So, that's the short version. That's how we're doing. Dart, you disappoint me. As usual. Uh, Elwood was fine over because he has a rapier, so he'll be fine. God, it's so much disappointment today. But anyway, he'll be fine against the dudes up there. Raven, um, he needs a level more than you do. Skill, well, I guess that's useful for him, if slightly disappointing. <sighs> Man, I, if they keep getting shitty level ups, it's like, God, they need to get better level ups. Uh, Lynn is going to hide down here and continue using the Iron Sword. Because that way, if a Cavalier attacks her, she won't kill it and get attacked by the next Cavalier. Because that... Oh, she didn't even get hit, though. Good. Lynn is a little fragile. You have to protect her. Uh... Yeah, at this point, Farina does not have the strength to defeat this guy in a single... Oh! Farina! Well, that was impressive. That was impressive. Just as I was saying she couldn't do it, she was like, fuck that, I'm doing it. And a little spec for X for guides. Might as well Heath can kill this chappy. And we can get Priscilla in there to heal Ellawood. The Lords, Ellawood not so much, but Lynn in particular, she has such low HP and can get really, end up with a really crappy defense. So you have to uh, be careful of her and you can't rely on her just dodging everything. Because, you know, eventually she will miss. Oh yeah, let's take a look at the map. So you've got a lot of chests here. So this is not what we were saving Raven's Lockpick for, although you do need to use it. But with this combined with the next chest, you want to make sure you've got plenty of Lockpick left here. We can see uh, various dudes. Some of them are attack in place. And here's Kent, at level 3. We will recruit him with Lynn. Because as you may remember, Lin used to be a Kaelin knight. He's currently a Kaelin knight. He's clearly not evil and is morally conflicted about what he's doing. Ta-da. And reinforcements are going to appear around here. I think around turn 23 or so. 20, something like that. So we want to keep up a good pace. So yeah, it's, it's kind of a long, windy map. The intent of the map was to be a tall map where you kind of had to wind around it, you know... Which, I don't know, I think it's not entirely successful because, oh, that's not who I meant to heal at all. Oops. Oh, well. But uh, it's not, see, this is why Let's Playing is not for me, because I get distracted and then make stupid moves. Uh, 
But uh, I'll leave her here to deal with the archer. Heath. How far can this archer? Good. Heath can go up there and play distraction. Because his defense is insane. Um, what was I just saying? Oh yeah, I think this chapter is not entirely successful in kind of fulfilling the goals I set for it. Because there, it, it does get a bit... I kind of want to pace it so you'd have enemies throughout, but without just adding endless reinforcements. So some of them are kind of attack in place, but it tends to peter out part way through. It probably could have to be a little shorter. But uh, I do like the map design. I think it looks very nice. Oops, I forgot that little space was there. Hmm. But, you know, it, it accomplishes some of its goals, but not all. Which, you know, I suppose nothing accomplishes all of its goals. But yeah, you, you've probably realized, right, that level design is not... I'm not some big, awesome person at level design. I'm pretty mediocre. But I think I, I did at least strive to make sure none of the levels were actively irritating to play. Speed for Freena, not bad, not bad. So I think although this level is long, and there are sections like this where you're kind of just moving everybody. It's like moving the dudes, moving the dudes. Uh, I hope that they're not... Yeah, you can you can really see it coming out here where there's just this lag basically between the top dudes, nice little Priscilla, and the the next set down here. If this corridor was shorter, this wouldn't be such an issue. Or, yeah, but... Um, I, I at least think the map looks physically attractive, though. You know, it's it's kind of pretty. I like the tile set. So, you know, could be worse. So we're even just going to dive down, get on with that. Dart is going to stand over here and equip his hand axe to lure this archer. Uh, Freena heads down here. Yeah, there's quite a few kind of ranged dudes going on here who you just need to lure out. Uh, keeping up with the healing. We definitely got to remember to buy heal staff. Next chapter, there's finally a shop. So, ooh, I did not realize that guy could move that far. Oops. Did that archer actually have crit chance? Damn. Dart has shitty-ass luck. Oh, but he got some skill, which is very important for Dart, who can sometimes suffer in that regard. Um, trying to decide what to do here, basically. Uh, Ellawood can... Tch, Ellawood, you need more strength, not a useless point of skill, okay? Get with the program, Ellawood. Get with the goddamn program. Farina is going to wait there, I guess. And Lynn can finish off this guy. Is she... Wow, I think she got surprisingly strength blessed. Ella would only has one more point than her. Lynn usually lags a little in strength. But, uh, not sure why Ella would is being shittier than usual. I actually like Ella. Oh, I may have fucked this up. Geitz may be attacked by too many dudes. I don't think he can actually kill any of them in one hit, though. So he should... Yeah, because he just has to wait now. And that occupies the archer, so that... That was my plan, that the archer would attack Farina. Because... There was no one else for him to attack, so if the bowman went first, he couldn't stand here. And if the archer went first, he would attack the nearest target. So that was my plan for putting Freena near an archer, but not actually in danger. See, they can't even damage her, so this is a good spot for her to get some experience. And, you know, it used up her javelin, but javelin's not that useful anyway. Dart. Yeah, he'll be fine. And so that's, you want to be careful of the, Kent in particular, because you could accidentally kill him and you don't want to do that. But the Cavaliers in general just, as Lynn suggested at the start of the chapter, keep an eye on how far they can move. Because some of your guys are a little fragile, especially for lance users, you know. Lances are powerful. I mean, axes are too, but lances also tend to be, you know, accurate. Which axes aren't. Uh, couldn't have Geitz finish it off. Why not? And then you're gonna... Priscilla will heal up Farina. Just keep up the healing. Priscilla's doing really quite well, and as I've said, our goal is to promote her at the end game so that we can survive it. 
Okay, Heath is going to lure out that first cab because of his enormous defense. And also, he's slow enough that he won't actually kill it, so we can give the experience to whoever we want. So it all works out very nicely. So there is a tricky point in this chapter. You have to split up slightly to get the treasures. I guess you could do it at the very end, like after everything is defeated, but that, I think, would be irritating because it would just be time-consuming. So, uh, who is close to getting a level? Heath actually is pretty close, so... Grab some X, my my Heathy friend. Farina, Priscilla, uh, how far can he attack? Not that particular square. Just kind of healing for the hell of it here. Oh, speed defense never really hurts, but the speed is more important for dodge purposes. She will become your dodge tank in the last level if you play your cards right. Oh, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. He's is often lacking in speed, so when he gets speed, we're happy. Raven is going to go deal with these guys, and we have a single use of the chest key left. Uh, actually, we'll use that up top so that it's less irritating. We just send one guy this way, and the one person has high move as well. Now, here's where it gets tricky. We do not want to let Kent attack us for fear of accidentally killing him. It's not terrible looking, but, you know, he's level 3. Strength for Farina, very nice. So what we do is, uh, well, let's lure him out with Heath with no weapons. That's, uh, because that way you can't damage him, and with it being Heath, he pretty much can't damage you. Uh, just keep an eye on how far he can go. Yeah. He, he's not terribly difficult. There's not that... Most of the characters who join you in this hack, you don't have to recruit. They just kind of auto-join. But there's a handful of recruitables, including Elowood, who's kind of just there as a tutorial for how to recruit people. And uh, and then, of course, Kent is the second one. Rafe, and that was disappointing. The second one who you can actually recruit. And here's this recruit convo. It's, uh, here we go. Talk. It's got uh, Girl of the Plains in the background, because I figured that was kind of nice as the... Uh, what on earth are you doing here? See how he calls him her commander? She used to be the commander of a little group of Kaelin knights. Not the commander of all the knights, but just of his particular little unit. And so this is the story that Lundgren discovered a plot against Kaelin in Elowood's village. So they're evil, and they have to be attacked. And Lynn is like, that is ridiculous. That's not true. And Kent is just like, his mind is blown. How could Lundgren do something bad? And... Lynn kind of, I think, understands that Kent is uh, maybe a little too trusting, so she just kind of is like, well, it's okay, why don't you just come with us? See, Kent actually really trusts Lynn from the past, so he's like, if she says it's true, he believes her, you know. And he wants to find out the truth of what's going on here. Now, Kent starts at level 3, so you may be like, ugh, when everyone else is like 7, he's, he's going to bitch to train. But if you feed him some kills, he'll turn out... Sometimes he turns out abominable, and sometimes he turns out well. But these soldiers are a good place to get him some kills. But yeah, I will say, I have sometimes had him turn out astoundingly shitty. And I've been like, what the hell? But he can turn out quite good. It's There's no reason he can't. He just doesn't sometimes, I guess. I'm pretty sure this guy is... I don't know if he's guard to guard the door or attack in range. I can't really remember. But regardless, Raven's heading down there. Everyone else is heading up, and Raven will have to catch up later. But it's fine, because Raven's not behind in level, and the enemies we're fighting aren't ones he'd be particularly good at anyway. Ah, nice timing for a critical. Yeah, see, he's not doing a lot of damage, but he's reasonably durable. Um, how much space does Raven have as an inventory? Not enough, so... We'll quickly just send Heath to, uh take one of his spare items. It uses up Heath's turn, but that way Raven can actually get all the stuff. Freena, luckily, is still low strength enough, and the knights are tough enough to weaken them for Kent. Um, I'm not actually sure who they'll go for here. It will be Priscilla if we leave her unguarded, but I'll just tuck Geitz in, so she's not. Kent's on a pillar, so I don't know if they'll ignore him or what. We'll have to find out. It'll be very exciting. No, they take Kent, because he's the weakest. So, 
let's give him a heal so he stays durable and have him finish this guy. See, so already he's almost up a level. You know, you can easily snag him a few kills there. It's without any trouble. And once he catches up to the party, well, we'll see how he turns out in this run. In one of my runs, he turned out great. Kent, this does not bode well. In one of my runs, he turned out atrocious. His growths are perfectly fine. I, I, maybe the RNG just hates him. I honestly don't know what the hell is wrong with him. But he, of all of them, he is the one who's the most swingy. Like, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. He has the biggest problem with that. The rest of them, like, they vary. But for the most part, you kind of know how they're going to turn out. And most of them turn out good. Either good or, like, average. You know, with some variability. So, the question of why Kent is shitty as hell, occasionally, and other times perfectly fine... Frankly, it's a mystery for the ages. Uh, who could use it? Okay, Lynn's sword is almost used up, so we'll give her this rando spare. And meanwhile, Raven will keep getting treasures. A short spear! Honestly, these treasures are probably the shittiest ones. Not in terms of being bad treasures, but just being kind of lame and random. Because I want to have treasure in the castle. Like, it's this big, rich mercenary's right, castle, right? So I should have some treasure. But I wasn't really sure what. So I just went with some rando items. The Sword Reaver's nice, I guess. See, soldiers are really good to level Kent up a little. Although, you don't want to expose him too many at once because it can swarm a little. That's better. Some strength, at least. Yeah, you can see here the swarming problem. But he wasn't in range of any more of them than that. I actually put him in range of more of them than I thought I had. Then we put him on a pillar. And this is where we start forming a defensive barrier, because it is turn 18. Well, we got here pretty quickly this time, but uh, when the knights start arriving, we want to make sure everyone is in place to defend. We want to make sure we are very ready for that, because they if you leave your fragile characters exposed, they will kill them. They will. And some gold, because gold is always a good treasure, right? And then Raven has a long walk back. But again, he wasn't going to be that useful against knights anyway, right? So it's like, whatever. Short Spear might have been helpful, but eh. Uh, hmm. Well. Oh yeah, these guys are also attack in range. So, you know, just watch their, their range. They're also good for Kent. So draw them out when you're ready. Um... One thing that you can do when the knights start arriving as you sort of move forward is that if Priscilla gets put on the pillar, they'll, I mean, they'll just attack her. They won't be able to resist. And it can be pretty handy. Because she dodges very well. And only one can attack her at once since she can't get a counter kill. So it's a good way to distract them from some of your more fragile units. So here we're kind of setting up um, we may have to draw back in a little, because this leaves a lot of characters exposed and needing healing. But we'll see how it goes. I'm actually, I think I'm going to make a quick save state, just in case. Because I don't want to replay the whole chapter, just for the knights. Okay, here we go. Yes, you're ready, I may have fucked it up. Kent is exposed to two people. Uh, yeah, they're usually fine. Dart's usually fine. The main thing is, Kent, I like to train him up here, but you have to be careful how many guys you expose him to. Because he will get killed if multiple can attack him. Um, yeah, we're basically just trying to control the number of people who can attack us at once. This way, these two knights are boxed in. And these two, you know, can, can survive two attacks. We also want to be careful about who's behind the lines. Because the knights do have a range. So, for example... You know, just keep an eye on that. And you can see that since you don't necessarily defeat them in one turn, you can quickly start to get overwhelmed by their numbers. See here, for example, don't leave Nino exposed to too many knights. She dodges well, but if she gets hit, she will be in deep trouble. Uh, see, we're just going to have her fall back until we have a spare moment to heal her. I'm going to switch to the Iron Axe so he does a little more damage. You can see them already kind of pulling back a little here. But, uh, if we can... See, this eliminated a bunch of knights so that 
you know, what you want to do is not let leave a bunch of them kind of half dead and let them build up because that will expose way more of your forces to them. You know, you need to control the number that you're facing so that you control how many attacks you face per turn. So he needs a heal. So Farina is going to go up here. Yeah, this this part is really about formation. Just keeping your guys in a formation that you can control how many people are getting attacked and keep it keep it kind of working. That's not so bad. Strength could be worse. Guides, he's not bad, but he needs more strength. You can see it right there. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to tuck Elwood in here, because he can get attacked by... Uh-oh, I think I actually left him exposed to too many dudes there. I thought it was only one, but it's more. That's the thing in this section. What you have to do is really keep track of how many attacks each character is vulnerable to. If you lose track of it, that's how you die. Like right here, you can see I left Geitz exposed to far more attacks than I should have. I didn't think it through. Luckily, he dodged them. Elwood's going to fall back. Priscilla comes up. Which is risky. Very, you know, it's risky, but the thing here is that um, also too risky, but if she, can she kill anything? She can kill this guy. And that means Dart can come up here. Here we're again doing just kind of clean out. We just need to get some of these numbers reduced. I think they only last till turn 23, so this, we should actually be just about done here with reinforcements. But yeah, we're just kind of reducing the number so we're not getting overwhelmed by them. And Raven finally showed up. So Elwood got hit, but only one person could attack him. And as you can see, this means only one is able to attack Priscilla. Misses, because Priscilla is very dodgy. A lot of people can attack Heath, but... Ooh, two people could attack her. Dang, I missed that. I was not careful enough. But luckily she was fine. I know some people are like, you should never put your healers in range of attacks. But I'm actually in favor of, it can be useful to do sometimes. You know, just in order to kind of direct the enemy flow. Because you know they won't attack. They'll, they'll preferentially attack your healers, right? So it's kind of useful. Because you can kind of force them to go where you want them to. Dart's going to slaughter that dude. Just out and out slaughter him. At this point, Farina has gotten enough defense on her. She tends to be surprisingly defensive for Peg Knight. Arg, I meant to have them attack the same dude, and I sloppily didn't. Oh well. Um, This will have to do for now. I think everyone should survive. Oops. I lost track of how many attacks Ella could take. Uh, Priscilla, hang in there. Luckily, these guys are, on the left, created a wide barrier so that we had plenty of room. Ella was just going to flee. Uh, Priscilla, how about, I'll have her flee. I think this has got to be the last wave of reinforcements. How many waves did I put in? Speed for dart, that's nice. I'll have her duck back and heal Nino. So that Nino can jump into the fray and kill this chap. Kent will kill this, dude. That way these two can finish him. I think that should be the last of them. It better be the last of them. <laughs> Thank goodness it is. Okay. Ugh. Sometimes I forget how many turns reinforce. Uh-oh. We really should have bought a heal staff earlier, but I, I didn't. I saved my money. Next turn we will. Ah, oh, some strength and speed. Kent is... This is what I mean about Kent. He's level 7. And when we compare him to some of the other characters, they're just... I mean, he's not terrible. But he could be better. Sometimes he just ends up being mediocre. Which is disappointing. Okay, there's still a dude in there. And Raven is a bit injured. So he's going to lock the door and then let his buddy deal with it instead. Wow, Dart has gotten... Mondo strong. Okay, Kent is actually caught up in level now. He's just not that great. So, uh, Lynn could actually use the X against the dude there. 
And meanwhile, I think Priscilla has the last chest key, so we're going to save her staff. The one use of it that we have. Red gem. So basically money. Red gem, it's money. And a secret book. I gave out a lot of stat boosters at various points, too, because it's like, what else do you give out? Wow, this was a great level up for Lynn. You make another quick save state. So that if I somehow stupidly die to the boss through my own carelessness, I don't have to redo everything. It's frustrating. Oh, geez, I bet this video has gotten mega long. I think I think it's been like 20 minutes. Uh, okay, I may have to re-record this just because it will be insane trying to upload it. But for now, save state, and we'll continue with fighting the boss after a break to stop the video from getting too long.